This is NDTV. And you are watching NDTV Prime. Hey, 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 hey. Please welcome Papa CJ. The question I'm going to start with is basically the one that I've been bugging you all about. How yeah. did the name Papa CJ come about? It's easy to remember, it's yeah. easy to pronounce, yeah. it's catchy, yeah. it kind of works as a brand. Mm -hmm. And if ever somebody's coming to try and find Papa CJ to kill him, uh, then the only place you find Papa CJ is at a comedy club where there is security. Yeah. So, yeah. Makes sense. Have you ever used comedy to get out of trouble? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I've used comedy in a couple of places actually. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you about getting out of trouble. Hmm. I was once, there was a girl who had an accident in South Delhi and she was taken to a hospital and she got 32 stitches on her head. Her boyfriend was hold, holding her legs in one arm. I was holding one arm and I was holding her head while the doctor was stitching it. And I was performing stand-up comedy to her. So she would look at me and she was distracted from the pain and whatever else was going on. I've done that. Fortis Hospital, Basan Koj. Then I remember once I... Uh, what is it? Ha! Huh. I did a late show at the comedy store in London. Thursday night, we finished about 2.30 in the morning. Five comedians got into this car, pretty high. Now, I do not endorse drink, drinking and driving at all. But this is what happened. Uh, <laughs> I like the statutory warning. No, it's true. I don't. I think it's, it's very wrong and I do not support it. Yeah. So, in this car, comedian drives the wrong way into a one way in Soho, pulls out, drives the other way. Uh, Cops start following us, pull us over, check the driver, he's way over the limit. Now, the law in the UK says you have to test the driver at the car mm -hmm. and then you have to test him at the police station. Okay. And if you're above the limit, it's second to murder. It's a big offence. Car gets put on the side, comedian gets into the cop van. Mm -hmm. We said, you know, to give you support, we'll, we'll come along. Mm -hmm. On the way to the police station, we start chatting with the, the cops. Okay. Turns out they're from Scotland. We spoke to them about the festival. We said, listen, we're comedians, you know, it's a Thursday night. We're encouraging the audience to drink. You've got to show them, you know, you're having a few yourself. Yep, yep, yep. To cut a long story short, we ended up performing for the police in the police station from 4 in the morning till 6 in the morning. My God. They got the driver something to eat. They let him go to the bathroom. They gave him water to drink. They checked him at 6.30 in the morning. He was below the limit. Sorry to trouble you, sir. That machine must have been faulty. You are free to go. My God. Yep. You've performed on a plane also. Yeah, I remember once uh, I was doing this corporate show uh, where a mobile company was launching a certain phone. They had painted the, the aircraft, the entire colors of that phone. And we were going to take off from Bombay, fly over Pune airspace, land back to Bombay. And I still remember because at 5 o'clock I had a flight to catch. No, 5.45 I had a flight to catch to come back to Delhi. Mm -hmm. And I had a show at Epicenter in Gurgaon at 9 o'clock. This flight took off late. Okay. Right? So I told the pilot from before, dude, I have got to catch this flight. Please try and land by then. 5.45 was my flight. So I performed on this plane. It was great fun. Earlier they were going to give me a megaphone. That wasn't working. So I used the PA system of the plane. Wow. Right? Those days you could do that without getting into trouble. Yeah, yeah. And I was performing. The pilot was heckling me. I was heckling him. I was making the announcements. Wow. I was like, ladies and gentlemen, we were very excited. This is the pilot's, you know, first flight. He's just got his <laughs> license from Nehru Place yesterday. <laughs> And I still remember the, the aircraft landed at 5.40. My okay. flight to a sold out show in Gurgaon was at 5.45. I literally ran down the stairs of the plane. Okay. Luckily I had my boarding card with me. Okay. And I spoke to the guy downstairs. I said, I've got to catch this flight, blah, blah, blah. Please, can you get me on it? Can you hold the flight? He says, sir, the plane is parked just there. But I'm really sorry. We'll have to take you back to the terminal and bring you back. He turned around to talk to somebody on the walkie talkie. 
I started running towards that other plane. Anywhere else in the security guy is running after me, I'm running towards a plane on the tarmac of an airport. My Anywhere God. else in the world, I would have been shot. Yeah. I literally run there, show them my boarding card, run up, shut the doors, fly back to Delhi. I get to the show 15 minutes after the time is supposed to start. I've literally walked into the audience saying, we're starting, we're starting, we're starting, don't worry. So that, I mean, I don't think I would want to do that again. I've done three shows in a night, but this shows 2000 miles away is a bit much. This is crazy. It was. It was probably quite stupid, but anyway. Yeah, but right. you know, lovely memory. The to comedians have. aren't yeah. exactly known for <laughs> doing the uh, most sensible things. <laughs> yeah. Ever have had any trouble with religion? Not really, because you know, I'm the kind of guy who's I'm very respectful of my audience. Okay. You know, if something means very strongly to them, I. I'm not there to offend. Hmm, hmm. I'm there to entertain. Like I find that, uh, and we can talk about offense in comedy later if you probably have yeah, questions yeah, about that. Yeah. So I'm not going to do something to intentionally wind up people's beliefs. Yeah. But I'll tell you a story that that did happen with me. I was performing in a city in the UK called Leicester. Now Leicester has a large brown and black population. Yeah. So I get to the show, and find out that the show is adjacent to a mosque. Ramzan is finished, they've said their prayers, eaten their food and come for the stand-up comedy show. So I asked the organizer, I said, listen, any limitations on language, on content? You know, I want to be, I want to make sure I'm respectful of my surroundings and of the occasion. Yeah. He said, no, no, I, uh, <clears throat> uh, I've seen what you do, they know what they're coming for, you, you go for it. So I went for it. So I was closing my show mm -hmm. with, with some material about sex. Okay. And from behind, I could see this guy just going, cut, cut, cut. I thought, dude, you're not the director. I finished the show, went really well. 1% uh, of the Asian elders get upset. Go to the bathroom afterwards, three guys come with knives, right? And I'm talking those nine inch blade knives. And they offer to stab me, right? Don't worry, it wasn't like an English offer. If you don't mind, could I possibly stab you? <laughs> <laughs> right? Lo sure thing, yeah. <laughs> come, come. A lot more aggressive than that. <laughs> okay. So I told them, listen, I have specifically checked this with the organizer. Why don't you go and speak to him? If he says anything different, you're welcome to come back and do whatever you like. Luckily for me, all three of them went. I quickly got into my car and I drove back to London. Okay. The following week, on a Friday afternoon, I get a call from Leicestershire Police. This is the exact phone conversation. Hello, is that Papa CJ? Yes. This is PC Ranveer calling from the Leicestershire Police. Yes, officer. Did you do a gig adjacent to a mosque in Leicester last week? Y yes, officer, I did. At this point, I'm myself, right? I, I don't know what he's going to charge me with. There, they've got these laws of inciting racial hatred. Mm -hmm. and so. Did you close your set with material about sex? Y yes, officer, I did. 300 black and Asian officers are having their Christmas party tonight. We would really like you to come and perform. <laughs> That was the Leicestershire police. My God. True story. My God. <laughs> okay, what's the roughest show you've ever done? The roughest show, you know, there's a couple of shows. One is, uh, I learnt my craft doing something called the Gong Show. Okay. At the Comedy Store in London. Mm -hmm. Now at the Gong Show, in fact, I tried this format in Delhi mm -hmm. two days ago and they loved it. The audience loved it, the comedians loved it. About 30 new comics will get on. Okay. And their objective is to try and last five minutes. Okay. Uh, in the audience, there's a professional host. Uh, three people are randomly given a red card. Okay. Three people are appointed judges. If mm. they're bad judges, we can change them. <laughs> and when they don't like what the comedian is saying, or if the, com the comedian is not funny, the red card goes up. Okay. When all three go up, you're gonged off. And the host will encourage the audience to be rough and violent and boo and if they like them cheer clap but if not you go for it it's vicious i learned my comedy doing doing that okay so as a result i have you learn to be funny in the first 10 seconds then funny in the next seconds 10 seconds mm. if somebody heckles you you learn to destroy them instantly mm. right of course it's different when you if it's a man heckling you and a woman heckling yeah. you very different yep. man heckles me destroy him instantly woman as a guy I have to wait until she takes it to a point where it's spoiling the show for everybody else. Yeah. Then I have the right to be mean to her. 
until then if i straight away attack her people are going to be like whoa easy tiger yeah. so there's a way of dealing with that one of the other shows is a show a legendary show called late in life at the edinburgh festival mm-hmm. that show starts at 1 o'clock in the morning wow and it goes on till 5 in the morning wow right? uh the comedy finishes early i think 2:30 three comedians get on headliners who have been doing it for 20 years plus are known to die at that show it is such a rough show there's 500 people they are drunk it's violent i remember and for me i'm a when somebody says oh that's really tough i'm like i want to do that mm. so my friend stephen k amos was hosting that show okay i remember this was the last friday of the edinburgh fringe in 2005 i had been performing for 9 months and he decided after the first act he would sneak me on to stage without telling the organizers now what happened was when it happened the organizer found out oh right so he says i'm sorry dude we can't do that so we literally begged and groveled and, and steven said listen he's a good guy i know he's got material just let him do it so they said okay after the first act goes on you go up and you do 5 minutes okay his deal was you'll get actually no he says you get 4 minutes mm-hmm. plus 1 minute for every round of applause that you get that was the deal okay okay stevie goes on stage warms up the audience brings on the first act professional headliner dies terrible show organizer said i'm sorry dude you're brand new we can't put you on this is too difficult let's send on the second act second act gets out double act die terrible terrible show yeah. then he's like i'm sorry bro but it's now we've got to put on the headliner uh this is just a terrible show we cannot put you on because it's such a bad gig headliner goes on he's kind of doing yeah, okay okay meanwhile my friend steven k moss tells the organizer said listen because he had seen me at the gong show and I've I've won that many many times. Yeah, yeah. He says I've seen this guy. He's got jokes. Trust me. Just put it on. Put him on. Luckily the band that was coming on afterwards yeah. had a comedian in it. Okay. So we agreed okay we'll put him on. If he does badly, that comic can go up and do a bit and then start the band. Mm. I get on stage first line round of applause. What was the line? The line was in those days uh, he introduced me as me saying Uh, all the way from india please welcome papa cj i got i get on stage and say well would you believe it nowadays even your comedy is being outsourced bang instantly relatable i did 10 minutes wow 10 minutes i killed and i remember walking off stage i couldn't sleep that i couldn't i just couldn't sleep for me it was like wow this is the gig that is legendary for slaying comedians yeah Nine months into comedy, I have got on, I have headlined, and I have destroyed. Yeah. For me, that was like, I mean, that will always be one of my most precious memories in comedy. Wow. Yeah. I mean, it's just you must have been on a high, happy high for like. Happy high, like how, dude? I could <laughs> not sleep, and then of course it's Edinburgh, right? Yeah. So the word goes out. The, I mean, the grapevine in Edinburgh is really strong. Yeah. New comic, nine months in, got in there, slayed little life. They're like, wow. That was pretty cool. That's nice. Yeah. You mean for standard comedy before? No, it's not as a necessity. It's just yeah. a question. Yeah. You've been in comedy before. Excellent. Well, so you know that in comedy normally the person on stage talks. <laughs> <laughs>